when you're trying to record a band or a group or something like that, you find yourself in the position of not really having that much great equipment and you don't have the headphones and stuff like that to record a whole ensemble in the studio or enough mics and such. And so one thing you can do is you can actually do a stereo recording of the band and basically try to avoid amplification and stuff and you could get something sounding pretty good. So what I have here is this is the finished version of this song and I'll, I'll just kind of play it in the background a little bit. But there's a little video that I took of the setup. And as you can see, here's the ensemble. The saxophone will start in just a second. There it is. And all of this is recorded with these stereo mics, um, these two mics here. These are both KSM32 mics, and they're using an ORTF pattern. And they're positioned so that they get all the members of the ensemble. But you can, you can hear how the, the keyboards are off to the left in the stereo field and the bass is off to the right a little bit. Drums are straightforward, and so is sax. And you'll notice that the saxophone is louder than the drums, and that's just because it's positioned closer to the mics. And if you notice here, you'll see that there's some tape on the floor, and that's as we were sound checking. We moved the saxophone player closer or fur further away from the mics to get the balance with the drums and then he had to stand on his tape to make sure he got that same level okay keyboard players both playing through the same keyboard amp so kind of limited on on resources here but we were able to put those two mics up there and there's the close-up on the mics and get a good sound there and and basically this is just a 003 it could be an M box could be any two-channel interface and a laptop and and some some condenser mics in cardioid pattern and uh, get a pretty good sound so here's the session here and as you can see I've taken multiple takes of the song and kind of edited them together to get this perfect take and then we've done some other stuff we'll look at too I'll turn it up for a second for you So if we take a look at this, we can see we did a little bit of EQ here, the Waves Linear Phase EQ, to pull out some of those low mids. There was kind of, it was a little bit muddy in the low mids, and so I had to pull a little bit out. And then we did some multiband compression to it, where we once again are working on the, the mid-range 250 area a little bit. We're also doing some some compression in the in the upper mids. Not much happening in the high high mids and the and the highs. We want to keep those pretty open. Not much compression going on, and then some compression happening in the low end. If that kick, we got to a spot where the kick and the bass start going again, we'll see that this will really start start moving and stuff. Okay, but in addition to this, because the room, as you notice, the room there's a lot of acoustic treatment around. It's not a very bright sounding room if we can get a good shot here okay so there's a lot of treatment and stuff and so we had to add some extra reverb to it to make it sound a little better so there's a nice concert hall from the waves impulse response reverb and that reverb was a little too too buddy too muddy and boomy and so, once again, we had to put some EQ in there, and, and this time we just kind of took out a lot of the low end going to the reverb so that the reverb wasn't taking that low end and making it go out of control. But if you notice, we can boom, turn up the reverb here, and you can hear definitely a lot of reverb going on there. Okay, and then if we finally take a look at the last phase of it, 
we are sending on the master, sending the whole mix through the L3 LL Ultra Maximizer and bringing that threshold down and, and putting some nice brick wall limiting on it. And we're bringing it down so far because a couple things, it is really dynamic and we have a lot of headroom. When we recorded this, we made sure to give ourselves a lot of headroom so we could peak. We, we would avoid peaking so we could have the the songs get nice and dynamic, let them get some get kind of crazy, but not have to worry about clipping and stuff. And finally, we have an analyzer here, just to see what's happening. You can see there's some anti-phase things happening, mainly because we've got the saxophone right there in front of those two mics. And so you're going to have, you know, some phase issues happening between these. But if we're listening in stereo and uh, with headphones or speakers, it's actually not going to be a problem at all. It might be a problem if we go to mono. But with this this setup, it's going gonna, it's gonna to sound really good, as you can hear. And there's our song. And that was stereo recording of a live band.